what do you need to know? The UX research interview can be quite intensive. It can last up to an hour. I've seen an average of about 40 minutes. So don't panic because I'm here to guide you on that. So the UX research questions that you'll get asked that people don't really know a lot about as I've interviewed people for the role as a senior and a lead user researcher. One of them is that how do you know which tool to use? So how do you select your user research method and in which situation, which scenario? So here you need to explain that you understand not just the tools or you've just memorized what tree testing is or what an ethnographic field study is or let's say click testing. You actually need to know when and why you're going to use that method over another. So you're trying to explain and justify why you chose that method. So it's not just good enough to say that you know the methods, but actually what you want to do is explain why. So for example, what you would explain is that you chose the method of focus group because it gives you insights from a group collectively. So it's, there's the power of group think. So people thinking together can be very creative and that's really good for qualitative data because people tend to express themselves differently in a focus group to a one-to-one -one interview. And that's what your answer would be. You'd say, I want to gather more qualitative data and the wealth of the emotions, so the empathy that I want to build in design, that will come better from a focus group rather than a one-to-one -one interview in this situation. And that could be because the topic or the user journey is a highly emotive one. It could be something that people are frustrated about and you want to capture that. The next one you want to explain is that you chose, for example, heat maps or click testing where you want to actually measure and see where they're clicking and when they're using it. You want to do that because you want to understand, let's say, for example, the hierarchy of the page. So is it laid out correctly and user friendly? So there's things and methods that we understand, such as the F type searchability. So people will search usually in an F shape. And what is the prominent things or call to actions and buttons and those things that users may want to see there? What are they going to be? Yeah. Have we put the right things in the right place in the information architecture on the website or the app? So you want to test that through click testing or heat maps. So that's why you justify that method. So whatever it might be, um, it, for example, it could be something like a website uh, or an app like Netflix, where they want to rearrange the hierarchy of the genre of films. So what they'll do, they'll do a tree test and see the order of it or card sorting to see how people will categorize different films of different types and genres. So these methods, you justify it through whatever method you can explain would be the best and most appropriate. The next question you will get asked is, what if someone disagrees with your research? So here you're going to answer with explaining that it needs to be evidence-based. So you'll say, look, this is the evidence from the users. So it's not what I think or what my thoughts are, but actually users are saying, this is what they think is the better solution to this user journey. So because you're, you're, you're normally researching one user journey or two or three at a time, you're not researching the whole website or the whole app that would just take too long and you wouldn't get detailed insights. So you're going to explain what the users said and that's your evidence on the basis on what you are saying. Now you do fight for the user. You want to put across the user's point of view. You're the advocate for the user as a user researcher, but you don't want to argue. You want to say it with evidence and justify why something would happen. I've had many situations where my colleagues disagreed with the user research or my experience of what the user wanted because I was present in the interviews with the participants and they completely disregard it. And it's quite annoying, but you have to be professional listen to their side. Maybe it's not technically feasible. Maybe it will take too long to build. So yes, we do want it always to be a great user experience, but sometimes it just can't be developed in time or during that sprint. So we have to be really flexible and understanding of each other as colleagues. So what sometimes happens is sometimes people don't understand or appreciate UX design or user experience research, and they don't see the value in changing something. And you may argue, you know, that this is the way forward and they don't understand. But that's all about you justifying yourself and try to get buy-in from senior stakeholders. If you really want to improve a design, 
you can always speak to them and say, well, this is my thoughts, this is why. Send them an email or book a quick chat, a 15 minute Teams or Slack chat, just to explain your point of view if you're really passionate about a design idea or an ideation. The next question you'll get asked is, what's the difference between user testing and usability testing, i.e. when do you use which one and at what phase do you differ your work or what do you do differently at different stages of your job? So user testing is usually at the beginning. So when you're trying to discover an idea on a design and improve it. And usability testing is when you've got the minimum viable product over the MVP. And the MVP is a, the design that has a minimum acceptable level of design that you can start to test. So this is a design that is not the finished product, but it's almost a finished product. And now you can test to see if it works with users before you go live with it. So once you go live, the whole world can access it and you don't want to do that without usability testing. It's real world testing. For example, if you're a car manufacturer, user testing would be, what does, should the car design look like? How are we gonna build this new car? Whereas usability testing would be, how do we test it? Once we built it, we test drive it, see if it breaks well, if it drives well, is it comfortable? Are the seats comfortable in the real world once it's built? So user testing would be designing the car, thinking of the, the design ideas, the interior, the exterior, and usability testing would be test driving the car once you've built it. I hope that was helpful, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow, and I'll see you on the next one. This is One UX One.